What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and a couple of things I need to apologize first and foremost. One, if I sound super nasally, I am getting sick, which couldn't be at a worse time because I'm also in the process of moving. You notice the GPU shelf here is gone. In fact, this monitor is not even hooked up to anything. It's just completely like a dummy prop at the moment. Nothing's hooked up to the test bench. In fact, this room, it might even sound more echoey because it's nearly empty. But I'm going to keep content coming while I'm sick, while I'm moving, because damn it, that's what men do. With its specifically tuned copper base and maintenance-free plug-and-play operation, the EVGA 980 Ti Hybrid offers ultra-fast gaming performance at the lowest temperatures possible. Click the link in the description for more details. All right, so I figured while I have this test loop still together, I could talk about a few things that I get in my inbox all the time. And rather than try and write out the same answer or copy and paste it 1,500 times, I'll make a video and hopefully uh, that'll be a lot easier for people to get some of the basic answers they're after when it comes to water cooling. And one of the reasons why this loop is still together was I was kind of curious, since this was the um, Primo Chill Sickle, which was their prototype sort of a translucent fluid, uh, very similar to like the Mayhem's, uh, or the dragon ice, so I was curious as if it was gonna fall out, because that's what was happening with the Mayhems, is over time it would start to fall down, and then it would get really kind of opaque and, and sort of semi-transparent looking. Obviously this isn't doing that. What I did notice though is that some of the dye will fall out of this fluid and start to collect in some of the lower portions of the bends and stuff here. Um, but anyway, this is, like I said, a prototype. It's not meant um, for general use yet. And that's one of the reasons why it's not actually out on the market yet. They're still refining this. And this was a year old formula. So uh, I was just kind of curious as to what was gonna happen. But so far, other than the fact that it, it got up here in the threads and kind of acts like a glue and I can, <laughs> can't really get that open right now. I might have to use a little bit of assistance on there, like a strap wrench or something. Uh, it, so far, it seems to be doing pretty good. It's not really changing any color. It's not kind of turning gunky or anything but I guess time will tell. But anyway, with it still being together here, I figured it was a perfect opportunity to talk about some, you know, some of the basic things when it comes to water cooling to really answer some questions here. Now, first things first, what is water cooling? Well, water cooling is just one of two methods that you use to dissipate and remove heat from an object. Now, the simplest way to cool things, obviously, is by a heat sink, which is just a chunk of metal that's touching the thing that's hot, which has a lot of fins on it, thin fins that make it a lot easier to one, increase the surface area uh, of the object that you're cooling, and then two, for air to move through it and then dissipate that heat out into the atmosphere. So heat sinks have been around for a long, long time. They're very basic, they're zero maintenance, and you can just forget it. But the problem is they're heavily affected by the ambient temperature and they have a very lower capacity of the amount of heat that they're able to capture and transfer away from the object you wanna cool. Now water cooling on the other hand takes a water block which is touching the object you wanna cool much like a heat sink, but the heat is being captured by the fluid that is being moved by a pump through a heat exchanger or in this case a radiator that then has a fan moving through there, very similar to that of a heat sink with tons of little fins on here which are creating a, a lot of surface area to cool and then moving that off into the atmosphere. But what's neat about water cooling is you can remotely move that heat. So instead of having to have the heat you know, transferred right here in a heat sink on top of the CPU and all that heat moved into the atmosphere of whatever case that this is currently in, you can take these, the radiator, put it in an exhaust or a, in, technically an intake or an exhaust on your case, and then you move the heat more effectively out of your case without heating up the space that has the components into it. So you take that heat literally to the edge of the case and then just send it off into the atmosphere. Now the benefits of water cooling is one, liquid is a lot more efficient when it comes to the amount of heat that it can move. The liquid can gather up more heat than just air can, and then you can do things like uh, better overclocking, you can get lower temperatures, much, much lower temperatures, a much quieter cooling benefit when it comes to cooling your system. The downside is, as you can see, there's a lot of components involved. This is a very basic loop. We got a radiator, two fans, a reservoir and a pump combo to make it easier to get that set up properly. And then we've got our uh, CPU block and then our tubing. And then as a benefit, you know, bonus on here, we've also got my drain plug or setup that I've got. Another downside is this can be pretty expensive where you can get something like a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo for about 30 bucks US dollars, put that on and get very good cooling for stock or mild overclocks on your system. This here is gonna cost anywhere from 200 bucks and up, 
uh, all the way up to you know ridiculous amounts of money for super high-end custom loops that cost well in excess of a thousand dollars to get you know better cooling, lower temperatures, lower noise, and a much more uh, higher headroom when it comes to overclocking. Another downside to water cooling though is that there is maintenance involved where the fluid has a lifespan. The fluid does need to be changed every so often and that's gonna depend on you know, the amount of heat in your system, how many components you're cooling, the types of metal in your system. The, the, you know, metallurgy is a big deal when it comes to water cooling. That's why we're constantly fighting things like fallout or corrosion, um, changing of colors of fluids. That's all metallurgy that's, that these companies are constantly trying to evolve and make better. The problem is all of these components here use different grades of metal. You, sure, it's copper, but there's a lot of different grades of copper. There's lots of different, um, you know, there's, there's, there's contaminants in copper and all that sort of stuff, uh, you know, whether it be also nickel plating, it's all different types of nickel and, and different, you know, qualities of the nickel plating. All of that matters when it comes to the fluids. Uh, most of the time you can just install it, pour it in, and you don't have to think about it. But when you start dealing with translucent stuff like this, like you guys know I was dealing with the Mayhems, there's lots of factors involved. In fact, you could have the same radiator and then you know, buy two of these, do a metallurgy test on them and find two different qualities of copper in there. It just depends on which copper supply was used at the time that radiator was actually made. So that's why you see so much constant debate about fluids and what's better and what's not. Now basic components that you need in water cooling, as I said, is you're gonna need a water block, usually at the very least a CPU block. You're gonna need your reservoir and your pump. Re reservoirs are technically optional. You can just use a T-fitting and plug it and use a syringe to push all the fluid in there and get the air out. Um, reservoirs just make things so much easier and you can get them for as cheap as 30 bucks, you know, 25 bucks, depending on the type of reservoir you go with. But you also need your heat exchanger with your fans. Uh, your tubing and your fitting. So all of that together, um, you know, they do have complete kits that you could buy that have everything in there. It takes all the guesswork out of it. In fact, it even comes with the fluid or the concentrate for you to put in there, which is anti-corrosive, and it will keep the metals from, you know, turning uh, all kinds of nasty, corroded crud in your system. It's happened in the past, but fluids have gotten a lot better uh, over the years where you don't have to worry no, so much about corrosion anymore. And then optionally on here, like I said, you have a drain loop, a drain system here to make getting the fluid out um, easy. That's kind of one of the most overlooked things when people put together their loops is, how are they gonna get the fluid out? And we'll do a video about that in the future, uh, about some of the easiest ways to get fluid in and out of your systems. Another common question I see all the time is, am I going to ruin my system if I develop a leak? Um, and the simple answer to that is, yes, you could ruin your system if you develop a leak. Obviously, it depends on where that leak is. Um, awesome Sauce Kyle, he had a leak. He was fortunate it wasn't anywhere near any of his components. Skunk Works has had one leak, and unfortunately, it was down in the bottom of the case, away from the power supply and no other electronics down there, so it didn't damage anything. Um, but if you got a leak, let's say, at your CPU block, you know, if this leaks down into your socket or onto your graphics card, sure, it absolutely could cause a problem that could take out one or all of your components. If it leaked into your power supply and it creates a short across, let's say, the five volt and the 12 volt, and you start sending 12 volt down to all your five volt circuitry, yeah, it's gonna fry pretty much everything attached to it. So the risks are there. So, but, but one thing I wanna address, I, say, I see folks say, oh no, I'm not gonna do a custom loop, that just sounds dangerous. I'm going with an all-in-one co cooler. Well, guys, all-in-one coolers are prone to the exact same failures that could happen with a custom loop in an all-in-one loop. It depends on the quality of, of the fittings and the tubing and the blocks and the O-rings that they use when they put that together. And keep in mind that a lot of these all-in-one cooling brands, they wanna do it for the cheapest amount possible simply because the affordability of an all-in-one cooling loop is what really makes it the incentive for newcomers to wanna to get into water cooling. So I just wanna put that out there. Don't think that all-in-one water cooling loops are your answer to potential leaks. Now that kinda of leads me into the next thing where folks will say, oh, I'm not too worried about it. I'm just gonna put in a non-conductive fluid and if it leaks, I'm just gonna be like, ha ha ha, whatever. Now that's good in the beginning, but the problem with those fluids is, and I tested this actually, I did this on a forum. This was long before YouTube. Uh, where I ran a Fluid XP non-conductive fluid for seven years in the same loop. It never broke down, but what happened was it definitely became conductive over time. Because remember, as these coolants are flowing over all of these metals, they're deionized. Uh, the, the fluids are deionized as they're made and when they're concentrated and, and when they have their anti-corrosives and, and you know, non-conductive properties to them. The problem is as they flow over these metals over and over and over and over and over, these metals start to break down and the deionized fluids, they want their ions back. It's like, 
it's like crack for them. They have to have it. So they start trying to absorb it as much as it can from the metals that it touches. And eventually over time, it can become uh, conductive again. But the level of conductivity that it's going to achieve again is going to depend on a lot of different factors. So I can't say it would or wouldn't end up damaging your system. But I want to put that out there to where anti uh, or non-conductive fluids are great in the beginning, but it doesn't mean they're going to stay non-conductive over time. It depends on how long you run it in your system. And they will always have a recommendation on how long you should run the system before you, you flush it and replace it. Um, I usually do it about, well, in skunk wars, it feels like every two months. Uh, but typically on, on systems, like the, the test bench here has been running for over a year. Over a year now, no change in color, no change in any sort of contaminants or floaties moving around the system. So I've, I've gotten pretty, you know, lucky on that, but then again, I have one radiator in one block and it doesn't get very hot and it's not used very often. So there's a lot of factors involved with that. But ultimately the choice of getting into water cooling, you really have to ask yourself, do you need it? The answer is very few people actually need it. Um, overclockers pretty much need it, um, but day-to-day -day general use in gaming and things like that, you've got to ask yourself if the additional maintenance and potential headache is worth it to you. And if it's not, then you have your answer. It's definitely not for you. But if you're an enthusiast like I am, and you're and, and this just looks cool and you like looking at it and you, you just, you're really willing to take that next step of added costs and aesthetic benefits to lower temperatures, even if you're not overclocking, then it could be worth it to you. It's the same reason why people put fast parts in their cars or, or people put decorative driveways in their homes, stuff like that's not necessary, but if you want it, then it's definitely something to consider. Uh, I've been water cooling now for well over a decade and I don't see myself ever changing that. And I do take a lot of precautions to try and minimize the amount of risk that I take by doing quality components and not buying the cheapest that I can. Remember, you get what you pay for in every market in the world. You get what you pay for. So you, my advice to you, quite honestly, would be if you can't afford a better loop now, but you can afford, say, you know, like Chinese knockoff fittings and stuff like that, don't, don't, don't scrimp on the fittings. Trust me, the fittings are the place you want to definitely consider going top end because the fittings are where the leaks always happen. Anyway, guys, I know this video was kind of rambling all over the place, but you guys like having these conversations and they're easy to make, especially while I'm moving right now. So although it feels like a little bit of a cop-out video, you know, in terms of effort, I still hope the information helps you guys. Anyway, um, let me know what kind of content matter you guys want if I'm gonna continue the discussion about water cooling. Part of the problem here as an expert in the, in the, the subject is that I have a hard time figuring out where to start these conversations because I know all of this and a lot of it makes, it, it's, it's just so ingrained in my mind, it makes it very difficult to determine where to start. Where, you know, what is the most beneficial to you as a newbie water cooler that's gonna help you uh, put your mind at ease and know where to begin. So let me know on either Twitter or Facebook or the comments here. All the information's right here in the end slate. Uh, let me know what other topics you think are worth talking about because the last thing I wanna do is put too much at you too quick and confuse you, which is probably all I did with this video here. Anyway, I'm also gonna be doing a couple of moving vlogs. Um, not a lot, I don't wanna just start vlogging and, and blowing up your inbox with a ton of like, I'm moving these boxes into a new place, here's my vlog. Um, I'll do a couple because you guys, some of you guys are interested, but not too many. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Sorry this video was not up to the standard I normally like to keep them, but I hope this video has helped you nonetheless. All right guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.